Um, this may come to a shock to a lot of you, but for me it's really not. This is my story and why I've left the fire service. Yes guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, if you don't know already, my name's Cameron and I've been a firefighter now for two years. If you are new around here and you don't know what the purpose of this channel is, I've always made videos for you guys to give you guys the best information possible to be a firefighter from my past experiences and what I've been through. Now, like I say in every video, I'm recording this in the garage, so obviously you might be able to hear some background noise. I think someone's sawing something cool in their garden, but yeah, we'll just carry on doing the video anyway. Now, I just want to mention for you guys that are watching this, um, if you didn't already, I worked for West Midlands Fire Service, so all my opinions and views in this video is kind of towards those because that's the brigade I work for. This isn't about any other brigade as they all are slightly different and my experiences has not, has not been with any other brigade, it's only been with West Mids. However, unfortunately I am aware that some of the things that I've been through and witnessed does happen up and down the country. If you've seen on the news and stuff you'll know exactly what I mean. I'm not going to talk too much about that but if you've seen it then you know what I mean. Yeah so I'm making this video as I do believe that it's in the public's interest to know what I've been through especially and you guys that are watching this the main audience on this channel are those that are going to be new to the fire service. Some, I know some people watching this are already firefighters, but my main audience is those that are new and wanted to join as a firefighter, similar to the position that I'm in because I've only been in two years myself. Now really I feel like the weight is off my shoulders because I can now just talk about truly how I feel and my experiences as I am no longer employed by the West Midlands Fire Service, so if anything I'm just a member of the public. I can finally make videos without having to please people or having to worry about what someone's going to say or whether someone's going to report anything back to the service. So for me that's already a big relief and not only do I think that it's your interest to know, it's also a bit of closure for myself. I've been thinking about how I'm going to do this video for a while. I've actually got like a, a template as such in front of me which I've wrote up. Now I could have made this video a while ago but it would have been on a very different scale when I was a lot more angrier and a lot more frustrated. I definitely would have said some things that I would have regretted if I'd made the video sooner, but I've definitely had time to sit down and reflect how I want to put this video across to you guys. Because as much as what's gone on, I still have respect for myself and also respect for the organisation to some extent. And I also just want to give a little message now to those people that are watching this who I know that you've screenshotted my stuff or recorded clips of my social media and kind of sent it in to the brigade to report me. Um, I'm not aware why you've done that. Don't worry, I know who you are. I'm not gonna, this isn't about naming names and stuff, but I know exactly who the people are and stuff. And it's just a reminder to myself to never really trust anyone as much as you think. Um, and this is only a valuable message to anyone watching this, especially the aspiring firefighters who wanna be firefighters. Um, not just in the fire service, but always keep like, they say keep your enemies closer. And I guess this is true in that sense. It's mad when you, when people's backs are against the wall, um, trying to think how to word this but yeah when people's backs are against the wall it's kind of shocking how all the morales and stuff go out the window and that person who you thought you had a good relationship or someone that you knew as such as then when the coins flipped um yeah they're not they're not who they portray they are they've just got this it's almost just like a face like a, a barrier so yeah hello to you and hello to anyone else watching this from the fire service because i know you guys are probably going to be watching it as well and it's crazy because I think this video is going to open a lot of people's eyes, especially um, those guys who are wanting to join the fire service because I have been kind of putting up a brave face as such on, on my YouTube channel because I haven't wanted to let it affect the channel growth and the inspiration that I'm giving you people. But I'm going to speak about later on why I've kind of kept it behind the scenes as such. So briefly now, I'm just going to talk about my story. For those of you that don't know, this is a bit of a more in-depth insight into my story and my journey as a firefighter, and it'll give you guys some kind of like background knowledge about what I'm going to talk about. So like I mentioned at the start, I've been a firefighter now, coming up to two years, nearly two years on the dot. If you include the training school, it's been over two years, but actually on the fire station, about two years. And then things kind of took a turn for me and went for the worse roughly about six to 12 months ago now about halfway through my kind of short career at the moment. Now, before joining the fire service, I obviously really wanted to be a firefighter. Um, it was almost a dream as mine as such. Not as much as some of the guys I've spoke to where it's their dream from when I was 14, 15, probably younger than that. But I've always been interested and because the kind of standard to get in was so high, it almost makes you want it more. They always say you want what you can't have as such. So yeah, I'd say the first 12 months of being a firefighter was perfect like I enjoyed coming to work I enjoyed all the stuff we done I enjoyed the training I enjoyed going to the incidents I enjoyed learning um, like literally some days I'd wake up and it wouldn't even feel like I was going to work I'd be like I'm getting paid to do this like it's crazy 
Yeah, so fast forward about 12 months and our old manager goes and we get a new manager come in. Now, I'm going to try and explain this the best I can because some people that are, I guess, not in the fire service will not understand some of the terminology and stuff that I'm using. So I'll kind of keep it as simple as I possibly can. When we had the new manager, um, to put it kind of bluntly, but in a nutshell, the workload from my end feels like it went from like here all the way up to here. And bearing in mind, I've been on station now for about a year. I've been on station for about a year and it almost felt like when the new manager come in, there was almost like a, it felt like to me personally, there was almost like a reset on my development. Because for those of you that don't know, once you get onto station, you have like an 18 month window, I suppose, to be signed off. It can be longer, of course, but you aim for 18 months to be signed off as a competent firefighter. And to be competent, you have to pass your assessments and kind of get your development plan signed off. And the person that signs these off is your manager. So realistically, your manager's kind of got your pay rise in their hand. Now, just to point out that this is nothing personal towards that manager, but this is just my example of how I feel like different managers have different expectations. But And that's all good and well, but then when it comes back to the recruits on the station especially, and you're getting one, two, three managers in your probation period, it can be very kind of unsteady and like confusing at times. Okay, so I'm a year in now and I've just had a new manager. Let's fast forward another six months. Now, I believe at least one of these months I was off with stress just because of the different workload and I felt very overwhelmed. This was before I started any YouTube stuff, any social media content. This was before any of that. Okay, now from six months in, this is where it all went downhill for me personally. So people watching this, then you've probably heard rumours and stuff. I'm not going to exactly explain what happened, but there was an incident that happened between me and my manager. I'm not going to explain the details of what happened. I'm not going to talk about any names or anything like that because that's not the point of this video. But the reason I'm mentioning it is because this, is, for me, was when the initial downward spiral began. And this is definitely when my mental well-being started to deteriorate. Now, following on from this incident that happened with me and the manager, I actually put a complaint in. And that was purely because I wasn't happy or I didn't feel comfortable with what had happened. So this was roughly a period of time when I started first creating my kind of social media content about the fire service. I started on TikTok. For those of you that don't know, who have just come from YouTube, I actually started making videos on TikTok. And then I use YouTube for my kind of longer form, more educational videos. Now, I subconsciously knew that I'd get a bit of, not so much stick, but I had this thought in my head of when I put the complaint in that it wasn't going to be as plain sailing for me from then on. I don't know why I can't tell you why, but I just had this gut feeling. Trust me, you know, if you've been in the position that I've been in, then you know exactly the feeling I'm talking about. And then guess what? Two weeks after I put that complaint in, I then get a letter saying that, I'm being investigated myself because of stuff that I've put online and a couple other bits and bobs. But let's just say the other bits and bobs were pretty irrelevant as when it comes to the final kind of hearing of the case, they got dropped as there was not enough evidence to back them. So the main thing was the social media content that I'd been posting. Now, so these videos that I kind of, I guess, got investigated for were videos I made probably 10 months ago. Um, they had nothing to do with the fire service videos at all. However, I was a firefighter when I made these videos. Some of you might have already seen them on my YouTube channel. It was the public interviews that I used to do when I used to ask people awkward questions, for example. And I just find it a bit of a coincidence how two weeks after I put the complaint in, I then get a letter myself to say, right now, you're getting investigated for something you've done 10 months ago. I get I was a firefighter and I've held my hands up. For those of you that don't know, um, one of the videos had um, a Roddy Rich song in and it said the N word. And this music was just in the background of one of my introductions. And another thing was like, I was asking people in public like different questions. Like for example, one of them was, are you a bokeh? If you don't know what a bokeh is, then Google it. And same again with that, I held my hands up and I get it like being a firefighter and asking questions in public that are of sexual nature. I understand that it is against policy, but from my end, it's like, you didn't do me for this like 10 months ago. Maybe you didn't know, which is fair enough, but I'm pretty, it was all over my Instagram and I had firefighters on Instagram. I'm pretty sure someone would have said something, but then it's like the videos weren't malicious as such. Um, I had consent from everyone that I was videoing. I wasn't doing anything illegal, but yeah, it just frustrated me because as soon as I started making content about the fire service and inspiring people, this was when I was getting like YouTube messages and messages on Instagram of people saying like, you inspire me you're a role model, for example, like really positive messages. So in my mind at this point, I'm almost kind of getting back to being myself. I'm getting these inspiring messages. I'm feeling like I'm doing something wow, something to help other people. And then before you know it, I've put a complaint in and now suddenly I'm getting investigated for something I'd done a while ago. It was all just a bit too coincidental. 
I guess you could say. And like with some of the TikTok videos, um, I got pulled up on the, when I was made, for example, the video I done on Christmas Day when we had five minutes at the end of the day and I washed my car, or I put my feet up for lunch, and the, that was apparently giving off a bad image, but it's a realistic image. Like, you guys want to see real stuff, you want to see what we do. Um, and this is what this is what I said to, to like the officers and stuff, like, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you guys or pretend that the fire service is something it's not because why would I do that? Sorry about my phone, but why, why would I lie to you? Like, I've got nothing to hide. The organisation shouldn't have nothing to hide. Like, you're, you're kind of scrutinising me for having a lunch break. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's mad. So yeah, in the same month, I'm kind of involved in two investigations. Um, the one about my manager, I was told that I would hear back of what the outcome would be at the end of the month. This was probably five, six months ago now. Still haven't heard nothing back. I've asked if I'm legally entitled to know what the outcome is. And the situation is I'm entitled to know that there is an outcome, but I'm not entitled to know what the outcome is, which is fair enough. But do you think I've heard back any emails? Nope. And after speaking to some people, I feel like that is a legal requirement. So I don't know why I haven't heard back as such. And let's just say that I know the outcomes of both my investigation and the other investigation. I'm not going to tell you guys exactly, but it's just, um, let's just say I got a much worse discipline. Now, coincidence, who knows, but I don't make the rules. Do I think my discipline was harsh? Yes. <sighs> but yeah, it's over with now anyway. And I just want to make it clear I have not been sacked. I did leave. Now this section of the video, I kind of just want to talk about being new on a fire station. This will apply to a lot of you guys who are going through the fire service recruitment process. And I'm just going to talk about my experience and what I've kind of seen happening on other stations in other brigades. Obviously, when you're doing your training, you're with probably 20 other people, like I was anyway. And obviously, you'll go to different stations and you will have different managers and you all kind of live your own separate journeys as such. Now, over the two years I've been in, I've actually had four managers in total. Um, this obviously isn't ideal because you'll find that if you have a new manager, say if you have a manager, for my example, for a year, you have a manager for a year, your new manager will come in and then it's almost like you've got to prove yourself to them, to that, to that manager now, because he doesn't know or she doesn't know how you're performing. So it's like, right, let's do it all again. And that's, that's the bit which frustrates me, which also may frustrate a lot of you guys. For example, I was getting asked to do things on day one from my new manager, which I'd done when I first got onto station a year ago. So imagine being a year on station and thinking back to your first day, you get a new manager and then he says, all right, let's do X. And you're thinking, hold on a minute, I've done this a year ago. Like this is basic as such stuff. I need to, I want to progress. I want to develop more. Can we do something more advanced as such? And like I said, from research, I think looking at different articles and i'll list a few now on the screen anyway just for your guys's interest as you can see being on a fire station as a new recruit it seems to be a recurring issue as such across the board a lot of the information i found on i was reading these was actually quite relevant to my situation and it made me think hold on this is happening elsewhere as well so it almost opened my eyes quite a bit i found that there's this kind of idea in the fire service that i've heard it a million times and i presume a lot of people that are on my training course and other trainee firefighters have heard it and it's almost like um, this idea of playing the game. And for those of you that don't know, playing the game is literally as such, basically putting up and shutting up, almost not feeling comfortable in saying how you feel about things or how you feel about situations because you've got to play the game. And it's almost this sense of, wow, I can't actually talk about how I feel about a certain situation because if I do or step out of line, I'll get punished for it. And it's this idea of you just keep playing the game and then you'll just coast through and then you go to work, you just put a face on, please everybody else, just do what you need to do just to get through the day. And you're not, you're not being yourself. You're not being yourself on the day because you're just playing the game. You're just, you're just pretending to be someone that you're not. And now just, this is my message just to you guys. Like, if you do get on station, don't feel like you have to play the game. Like, just be yourself. Like, no, I won't play the game or I won't fucking put up and shut up. Like, no, I'm not like, I'm not going to be spoken to like that or feel like I have to impress somebody that probably doesn't even like me anyway and I know there's probably a lot of firefighters out there who are literally thinking exactly what I'm thinking now or in the same situation but yeah man don't don't pretend to be somebody that you're not because life's too short for that man and another thing which I feel quite highly about is not letting people speak down to you or speak to you in an unrespectful way just because they have a rank on their shoulder or they're a higher authority than you I understand authority but 
I'm still a human being, still treat me and speak to me like I'm a human. If you wouldn't speak like that to me when we're outside of work, then don't think because you've got a collar or a uniform on that you can speak to me like that inside of work. It's like anything, it's just basic, like treat somebody how you'd want to be treated. Now the next section I want to talk about is why at this point in time I just didn't feel like I fit in as a firefighter. So me personally, I know that I'm very entrepreneurial and very almost business minded. And I knew this before I joined the fire service. I feel like I know my worth. And to be honest, after the two years, it almost feels like that if you don't fit their mold or if you don't fit how they want you to be, which is fair enough to an extent, but if you don't play to their rules, you'll slowly, slowly be pushed out in one way or another, which refers back to my investigation about my social media. In the back of my head, and I've said this to a few people, I'm, I know that, I guess, on the grounds, because it was such a grey area with social media, maybe they couldn't, actually sack me but they would maybe put things in place to kind of put me on that almost final pedestal when if one more thing cropped up then I could be out the doors no questions asked and I kind of took that as like all right we're slowly pushing you out so yeah now if you go on YouTube and type in a guy I think his name's Max Powell and he talks about he's an American guy and he talks about his experience with the fire service it's a video I watched quite a while ago now and I keep revisiting it because it hits home to me a lot to be fair with some of the things he says um, so if you haven't watched that, just type in Max Powell, why I quit the fire service on YouTube. If you want to know more about this kind of stuff, make sure you let him know in the comments that I sent you as well. I don't know him personally, but I, I relate to his story. And the big consensus is that like, he was a firefighter who started making YouTube videos and then that's when his problems occurred with his fire service and his brigade over in America. So yeah, similar kind of stories really. Again, coincidence, I don't know. Now the fire service obviously is very protective of their public image and I honestly feel like someone like me especially coming into social media as I believe no other firefighter has kind of done or is doing what I'm doing as it was such a grey area I do feel like it was like okay what Cameron's doing is new we don't really know how it's going to affect our reputation and our image so let's keep close eyes on him and let's kind of put the heat on him as such. The organisation is very aware and deliberate on protecting their public image, but I feel like my advice and my from my experience is perhaps put more time into your firefighters or your members of staff and their kind of mental well-being and what they're going through before you think about your public image. Because I'm going to get onto this later, but let me tell you, man, like I I don't put it this way. Before I joined the fire service, I was very strong mentally. I'm sorry, you can hear a plane or something out there. But yeah, as I was saying, I felt very strong mentally going into the fire service. Mental health was something that I'd never really ever suffered with. Um, I always felt like I could deal with it on myself. I never experienced kind of anxiety or severe stress. And with everything going on, I just felt like, honestly, I felt cheated. I felt let down. I felt ignored. I felt very vulnerable, which was the first time I'd ever had these feelings in my life, to the point where I'd have sleepless nights, like worrying, stressing about what's going on. It was affecting my relationships outside of work. It was affecting my relationships inside of work. would get people come in and I'd find myself being snappy or being just in a shit mood because of what's going on. Yeah, and I just felt like I was different to those around me. I felt like I wasn't almost scared to speak up. I wasn't afraid to do things which, oh, maybe don't do that. It, it might be career suicide if you do that. So for those of you that don't know what career suicide is, this is just an example of a report I found. Um, and as you can see, it says, inspectors found examples of staff being reluctant to speak up about or challenge inappropriate behavior as they felt as they're doing so would harm their careers with a negative mark placed against their names. Some reported being told it would be career suicide for them to do so. So as you can see that this idea of career suicide is happening in brigades all up and down the country. Which is actually quite shocking to be fair because career suicide is something I didn't even know about before I done my research. So it's clear that this kind of stuff is happening all up and down the country. For example, whilst I was going through my investigation, um, one of the kind of officers in charge of the investigation asked me why I was still uploading YouTube videos whilst going through the investigation. And my response was quite clear, like, <laughs> Uh, there's nothing wrong in these YouTube videos. When I'm making videos to inspire or help you guys become firefighters, why would I stop doing it? It's what I enjoy doing. Like, if anything, it's the only thing that's really gave me joy and a boost in my life since all the shit had, had, had gone on. 
And as I spoke with some members of the union, um, I'm fully aware that the fire service videos I was making were not wrong. They were not against policy. So it was almost like I was being told that like, yeah, we don't want you doing that, but we can't tell you we don't want you doing that, but yeah, we don't want you doing that. It's like anything I was doing, I felt like I was being silenced from like third parties or from, I don't know who from by, but it was kind of like subconsciously silencing me. I think in my heart, I always knew that from a young age that I guess a corporate job wasn't really for me. Um, I remember my, my last memory in school really was oh, these cars, man. Sorry about the noise if you can hear it. But as I was saying, my last memory in school was like, I remember a teacher asking me like what I want to be when I grow up. And I just remember saying a businessman. And I find that quite funny and ironic because at that point, obviously I didn't have a clue what I wanted to be. But it's just no, it's just solid like proof in my head that from early I've almost always been business minded and kind of entrepreneurial minded. <laughs> like, I even remember, shout out to you guys that went to my school, you know about this, but I remember like saving up because my mum basically couldn't afford, I wanted FIFA, I wanted, uh, I don't know what FIFA it was, but I wanted it. And for you that don't know, it comes out in September and my mum wouldn't get it me till Christmas until I waited for a Christmas present. And I wanted it now, of course, like every kid does. So I thought, how can I get some money? So my mum would give me money for lunch and I wouldn't spend money on lunch. And I'd go to like farm food, I'd buy cans of pop and I'd sell them in school or whatever, sweets, lollipops. And I ended up making 50 pounds to buy the game. And I always remember doing that. And that was the kind of first um, venture as such that I remember in my mind. Now I wasn't actually gonna show anyone these, but I've got some clips here from, um, I don't know the actual date, but it was on the way to work one night shift. Um, I feel like I'd just been told that I was getting investigated and I felt very, as I said, vulnerable, very upset. Um, you can see from the emotion in the video that it was affecting me, man. It was, I'd never felt like this in my life and I'm so happy I've like calmed down now because when I look back to then, it was crazy that I even let myself get to that point. So I never actually was gonna ever release these. Um, they were just videos I made to myself to look back on really because I knew it was a low time in my life. And I knew that me talking to the camera as such on my phone, I knew that I was almost talking to somebody because I had no one to talk to. I didn't feel like I had anyone to talk to. So I knew that this was my way of talking to somebody. It angers me as well when I look back on them, like how I let myself get to that point. Somewhere I never ever wanna be again. They are recorded on Snapchat and for you that don't know, you can only have a minute long. So just watch them, play them on 1.5 speed or two times speed if you want. But yeah, I'll show you now. Yo, it's a deep this year. I've got an interview coming up with the fire service um, about my social media. Apparently I've said some inappropriate stuff. Um, when all I've ever had is good messages, um, positive messages, I've never, went out there to kind of talk bad on anything. Um, I've always just gave my opinion and that's that. But now I'm getting penalised, technically, for posting when I'm just trying to do a good thing. And this is why I'm recording this basically, just to let my future self know that it's all bullshit. Um, the fire service are just, they just pick out anything to get you rather than like appreciate what you're doing. Like, when you think about it, I'm I'm promoting the fire service, I'm doing them good, I'm like, and it's, sorry about the language, but it's fucking annoying that I can't, so that one cut out, but continuing on from that, I'm just pissed off because I've only ever tried to help, I've promoted the fire service, I've got a following now, um, a small following, but it's like 15,000 on TikTok, but it's people that are like actively wanting help to get into the fire service, um, and I'm helping them and I just feel like they're just they're scrutinising me on the smallest things to almost get me out that's how it feels it feels like they just want to get me out um, because it would be easier to get me out than keep me in and potentially say something I shouldn't and it's annoying uh, maybe they're not open as to, well their PQA is open as to change maybe they're not maybe they they don't see the change because if they did, they'd understand that new generations are different. Everyone's different. We're all into different things. Um, and obviously, I've had to come and record another video because, yeah, it's just not, I just keep thinking about it. Like everything, I'm currently on my way to work as we speak, to be fair. 
I'm on a night shift, but just not myself, like I'm not and it is emotional because like when you're finding yourself pretending to be someone to impress people at work that you don't even care about but you're just told that, that that's the normal thing to do you've got to play play the game and just I don't know almost fit in when you know you don't fit in um, you don't feel like you fit in and everyone there everyone there is just fake everyone's just got like a everyone's just got like a a face that isn't them like they're just putting up a front while they're at work when the reality is the fire service isn't what everyone perceives it as yeah it's not what everyone perceives it as like people think it's this like amazing career and you'll be so loved and like and which is what I thought it was which is honestly what I thought it was but it's not like that there's a lot of bullshit and there's a lot of like faking and when you actually speak to a lot of firefighters no one's there's a few that are happy yeah but a lot of them are pissed off man a lot of them are just like there's pay they're pissed off with the pay they're just people spread rumours and like you literally don't know who you can trust and for me I'm worth a lot more than that um I'm not gonna spend 30 years somewhere where I'm getting treated like shit and spoken to like I'm 15 like there's more to life than that I've got way more potential than that but yeah this is just a me putting a little rant on to look back on when uh yeah I'm recording on snapchat so I only get a minute long but this is why they're all like cut off but yeah um it's not for me um I've kind of known it for a while I've just kind of not been telling myself but like, to just keep putting it out and just see what happens and well yeah I've, I've had enough of it now um, yeah, I, I really have. And my advice to anyone out there that's watching this, um, and if you do want to be a firefighter, then I do say go for it. But just listen to what I'm saying is what I'll say. Um, just listen to my advice, and because I feel like I'm just giving realistic advice, and I'm not hiding behind the bullshit. This is just raw. This isn't edited. This isn't scripted. This is just me speaking about how I feel off the top of my head. Um, as you can see, I'm in a car, so I haven't written anything down. Or, but yeah, let's see how it goes. Let's see how this shift goes. And um, I know it won't be forever, but it's definitely going to be a painful last few months. Definitely. One thing I will mention as well is um yeah a lot of people just kind of keep quiet in the fire service they just keep their mouth shut and just carry on doing what they're doing and in that way you are just in the system like everyone's got a voice and we all should be able to use it to an extent um a lot of people will feel like are scared to say anything because they know if they say something they'll get criticized or there'll, some, there'll be something that comes out negative that will get them in trouble everyone's just scared of speaking about how they feel so yeah let's put a stop to that and let's uh let's just let's just stop all that bullshit man. and i keep saying one more thing but this is actually the last thing um i'm a big believer in kind of speaking about how you feel and kind of not shying away from things that are happening to you or things that you think that wouldn't happen to me but in reality it would um so this is just a message to anyone out there that is like me and just has this kind of drive in them know that they just you just know that you you're capable of more like you just know it's all you think about every day um and yeah my advice my advice to you guys is just get through it man just speak on how you feel and everything will fall into place it's the kind of self-belief that i've got and it's what i recommend that you have as well um but yeah people have a good day wherever you are um peace so yeah why why did i stay quiet for so long then why why is cam only saying all this now
I might have already mentioned this earlier in the video, but I just tried to stay positive. Um, as I said, YouTube was the only thing that was going positive for me at the time. It was the only thing that I could, it felt like a bit of an escape because I enjoyed doing it and the channel was growing and I enjoyed growing as a person. I liked developing myself. And it just felt like if I stopped doing this, then I'd go insane. I didn't want to let you guys down as well. I had messages from people every day saying, when's the next video coming out? You've really helped me do this. I've now passed my fitness stage because of you. Also, if you want my exercise plan, the link's in the description. But the main part is I wanted to get all the investigations out of the way really so I could see exactly where I am in my life, in my career, and where I'm going to be going in the next part of my chapter. Now you might sit there and say, why didn't you just leave this, that, this, that, but for those of you that have ever left a job, then it's not as simple as that. Like I'm 23 years old now, I have bills to pay. I have monthly outgoings to pay as well. I have to be careful and kind of be risk averse to some extent. And that's why a lot of people get trapped in these like kind of jobs because they get to a point where they can't leave or they can't speak up because if they do that, then who's gonna pay the bills or who's gonna feed the kids? And that's scary. Like I know there's a lot of people in the fire service like that, especially, and they'll never tell you, trust me, they'll never tell you, but they know that they're stuck. They know that they've got to wait for their pension or they'll know that there is some kind of sense of being trapped. And that for me just blows my mind. It makes me think, fuck, you know, like wake up as such, like it's a wake up call for me. So yeah, if I made this video, I don't know, three, three four months ago now, then like I said, it would have been a completely different video. Um, I wouldn't be this calm. I wouldn't be this kind of relaxed. It would have been a different video and it, like I said, I would have said things that I would have regret. But the kind of general consensus with this video is I'm trying to keep it respectful, but also making you guys aware of what's gone on. Because the last thing you want is for me to stop doing videos as such, and then you're like, hold on a minute, where is he? Like, where's he gone? So we're coming towards the end of the video now, and I just want to talk about my advice to you guys, really. And when I say you guys, I don't mean the people that are already firefighters watching this. I mean you guys that want to be firefighters. Maybe you are new on station and you're finding your feet a little bit, or maybe you're going through the recruitment process as we speak. Now, despite all my anger, all my frustration over the past six to 12 months towards the fire service, I can honestly say that it is a good job. It depends on who you are as a person. I enjoyed the job because I enjoyed going out to incidents. I enjoyed training. I like having hands on the kit, for example. Um, I like being around station with the crew and the watch. Now, when people say it feels like you're going to like your extended family, I can definitely see why, especially guys that have been there 10, 20, 30 years. It, like you are, it is almost like your separate family and that's, that's, that's what I like about it. However, if you are someone that doesn't really take well to authority and almost having people of a higher rank above you, almost, I wanna say talk down, but I feel like that's the wrong word. Not so much talk down, but like talk to you in a way that because maybe you're younger or maybe you're inexperienced, they feel like they can get away with. I hope that makes sense. You, if you're listening to this now, you, you, you'll understand. Now, I'd never sit here and never want to sit here and tell anybody to not join the fire service. Like I just said, it's a great job. There's just obviously pros and cons. It depends on who you are as a person and it depends on whether you can adjust to certain things in the role of a firefighter. What I will say is just be careful on who you tell your news to. Um, keep your kind of circle close as such. Um, because you never know and that's just not with the fire service i suppose that's with every job and if you're on social media which i presume a lot of you guys are now in fact i know a lot of you guys are on it because you're probably watching this video and you've got snapchat instagram etc then just make sure that your account's probably on private if i was you um, if it's not make sure there's nothing on there which someone can report or have anything to say about because your accounts will get found by some of the firefighters like it's inevitable one thing i've learned is somebody's always got something to say no matter what you do, whether you try and inspire or help people or educate people, someone on social media or someone who's got something in against you who doesn't like what you're doing, who thinks that, why is he doing that? I can't do that. You know what I mean? Someone will always have something to say, so just be very wary of that. And now, like I say to everybody in a big corporate job, like the fire service, for example, and other jobs, you are just a number. Like you are just a number in the system. For example, I've left now and someone will be in my place within the next week or two maybe. So yeah, you, you are just a number. And that, that's the sad truth of it all really. That is the sad truth. And like everyone says, like if you were to die tomorrow, they'll replace you next week. So that is just how the cookie crumbles.
Like, it is literally just one big business that's funded by the government, isn't it? Now, on a personal level now, I'm just going to tell you guys why I quit and my feelings towards it. And like I've mentioned, because I've been at some low points, man, like, let me tell you, man, like, it's hard to sit here now and think back to it because when I was in that position, well, you've seen by the videos that I showed you from my, um, on my way to work, like, I was at a low point, man. I don't ever want to get to that point again. Now, whether I go back to the fire service, who knows? But for the time being, I need a break and I need some time away. I almost feel like I need to rebuild myself because, like, let me, let me get this straight. No job is worth your mental health suffering for. I didn't ever want to leave. My plan was never to leave. Um, when I first joined the fire service, you think I wanted to leave within two years? Nope. But I just felt like I had to. I felt like at this time in my life, I wasn't myself. And it's a very important time in my life. I'm 23. Can't feel like I'm being restricted into who I am and to what I believe in. And it's the same with any other job. If I end up at another job and the same happens, I will just leave again. I won't, I won't put up with this again. Now, who knows, as time passes, I may develop as a person and feel like, you know what, I enjoyed the job as a firefighter, let me give it another go, who knows. But for now, it's just not the case. But yeah, never, never be afraid to be yourself. Um, if you feel like you're doing something to impress someone else, and half the time you don't even know you're doing it, but yeah, just don't, don't do it. Like, you, you've got one life, you've only on this planet once, so make the most of it. And you, you don't want to look back in 60 years and be like, why did I do that? Why did I stay at that job when I was getting treated like this? Why didn't I just go for that thing that I wanted to go for? So yeah, it's a shame really. Like I enjoyed being a firefighter for the first 12 months exactly. I guess from there it did go downhill, but like I said, it's not a bad job. It's like, it sounds silly me saying this, but it's the best job I've had. Like in terms of the work-life balance, the uh, benefits of being a firefighter, especially having a gym on station. I feel like I always talk about that, but I love that part of the job. It's just the other things which I struggle with. I felt like I was very naive to what was going on around me and it I took me time off and I had to zoom out the situation to actually see how I was being treated and how it was affecting me. And you know what's also a massive shame is that I do feel like the brigade lacks in kind of social media knowledge especially. Um, and this is something that I could have happily worked with the brigade on like, I don't think they really understand the newer generation as such. Um, for those of you that don't know, the fire service, um, my brigade, believe stopped recruiting for 10 years. So what you'll find is there's a massive generational gap where you've got guys who have been in 30, 20, 30 years, and then you've got guys that are just coming in. Um, so it's almost like, imagine your mum and dad's, your mum and dad's age as such. And that's if you're watching this and you're like 20 and your mum's like late 40s, for example, similar to me. But yeah, like, and I've explained this to like the senior officers out there. I've said like, you're gonna, no matter what happens with me and my career, you're gonna have new people coming in who are on social media, who are interested in telling their friends they're a firefighter or interested in showing people around the fire station on their, on their phones. Like that is just inevitably going to happen. And I feel like they need to open their eyes and see that. But yeah, in terms of social media, like I could have helped them massively. I could have improved their Twitter, Instagram. I was going to make a TikTok for the, um, the fire station because that's what I said to them as well. I was like, look, a lot of the younger generation now, they're not going on the website and reading stuff. They're, they're on TikTok, for example, or they're on Instagram. They're looking at these short form content. They're looking at little clips, little videos. They're educating themselves from there. They're educating themselves from courses and videos. They're not doing it by reading free pages about the fire service, for example, on the website. But yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I will miss being a firefighter. I'll miss being with the lads at work. Um, you know who you are now watching this. Um, you lads, I can't, I've got nothing bad to say about you guys. Um, this isn't really a video like attacking anybody specifically. It's more like a general collective thing. Um, it's not me attacking the organization. It's just me voicing my opinion because I believe it's in the public interest. But um, yeah, lads, Enjoy the rest of your careers, man. You might see me again, who knows? But obviously you can always keep in touch and you're probably watching this now and you've got my number and that. So yeah, you guys are gonna see what I'm up to anyway in my next part of my journey because it's gonna all be on YouTube. And it's sad because it does, in a way, it's, we I'm, it's a weird feeling I'm getting at the moment because I feel like my life's almost ending in a way. But then I think I'm only 23, like I could do nothing for the next seven years and still only be 30 years old. Do you know how young that is in the grand scheme of things? I do have to keep reminding myself that like, just because I've left the fire service now doesn't mean that 
my life comes to a halt or I'm starting from scratch again. Like I've learned things from the fire service about myself, which I'd never ever thought I'd learn at such a young age. I have picked up a few like dad jokes and that as well, which I won't forget. But no, it feels like I've had like 40, 50 years of life experience when really my life has only just started, if even started yet. Which brings me on to my next point. So what is next for me? What is next for the channel? Something you guys are probably interested in knowing. So first thing I wanna say is that don't think that the fire service videos have got to stop. What I do wanna mention is now that I'm not part of the fire service, I can actually offer you guys a lot more stuff. I can give you more support, more in depth, definitely more realistic because like I mentioned, it's not like I've got a target on my back as such anymore. I am just a member of the public now, which is a bit weird, but you get the gist of it. So I actually think you'll get a much better representation of being a firefighter from me now. So it's weird how these things can kind of work out in your favor and definitely my favor too. Because you know, like it's still the same thing. Like I enjoy making videos, I enjoy inspiring people, whether that be the fire service or not, I just enjoy helping people. I feel like that is what, when someone says what gives you kind of purpose or what makes you smile or happy, it's knowing that I've helped someone or changed someone's life. And this video might even be that encouraging moment for you guys that want to quit your job. There's probably people watching this now who haven't even watched any of my fire service videos, but you're just watching it because you're thinking about quitting your job from the title of the video. So yeah, maybe this is give you some kind of faith and kind of leap. Like no job will ever stop me doing what I love. Um, whether I go broke, whether I, whether I go homeless, whether all these bad things happen, like I will take that to my grave. Like I won't stop doing or pretending to be someone that I'm not just for someone that I don't even care about or someone that doesn't even care about me. We only live once, man, and to live for somebody else is gonna be a sad, sad life. But yeah, man, I hope you guys are still willing to join me on this journey and continue to follow me as we've got loads of things to do, loads to explore, loads of lessons to learn, loads of experience to be had. But yeah, hopefully this is a bit of a turning point in my life now, like hopefully that I get to find happiness again now and I can go back to who I used to be before I joined the fire service. Because when I look back, I was a completely different person. You guys obviously don't know me before I joined the fire service, but I was a completely different person, man. Like, whether that's for the good or for the bad, but I just felt like I was a lot more happier in myself. But yeah, I'm sorry if I've let anyone down watching this. Like, the fire service, as I said, still a great career if it's something you want to pursue, but just take in mind of what I've mentioned. Um, I will still help any of you guys in any aspect of your life, whether you want to be a firefighter or you want to do something else. I've had people message me about kind of traveling and stuff as well, which is great because I'm a big fan of traveling and I'm pretty sure you guys are going to see probably on the next video where I am and what the setup is there because I've got a plan. Um, as I say, I'm not stupid. I don't know how this is going to sound because this guy keeps Sorry about the noise again, if you can hear it. But as I said, yeah, I'm not stupid. I know the direction I want to go. I know the direction I want to take the channel. And I think it's going to make the channel a bit more fresher again. It's going to bring new life to the channel. So I'm excited to get on the journey. I'm excited to start the next chapter in my life. So yeah, I haven't really got much else to say. I'm just kind of now it's almost, I'm getting excited again to reinvent myself and to start my journey again. I do honestly believe that you guys will prefer this version of me and I hope you understand where I've come from in this video and you can stick with me through the highs and lows that we encounter on this journey. And I'll never ever forget my day once. My name's Cameron, thank you for watching and I will definitely see you on the next video.